Hello, my name is Al Guyant. I'm a member of the Sun Prairie Resource Action Coalition, SPARC, here in Sun Prairie. And I'm here today with Billy Feitlinger, who's um, the executive director of the Wisconsin Alliance for Retired Americans. We're here to talk about one of the most important issues our country is facing, and that is decisions regarding the Affordable Health Care Act. And so what I'd like to do is ask Billy to explain what his group is, what its purpose is, and to start to talk about what's facing us in the uh, next few years regarding affordable health care. So Billy, thank you. And tell us a little about the, uh, the Alliance. Sure. And First, I want to just say thank you so much for having me today. Um, the Wisconsin Alliance Retired American is part of a national organization we represent about 107,000 retirees around the state of Wisconsin, and our main missions are really public education and advocacy with current and future retirees as it relates to state and federal programs. So over the last many years, we've been in existence since 2005, we have gone around the state holding town hall meetings on different retirement issues that affect people in our state. Great. So, everybody talks about the, the health care, uh, very few people understand it. Why don't you tell us some of the major parts of the Affordable Health Care Act, some people call it Obamacare. Um, what does it actually contain? And then I'll follow up by saying, what are some of the myths uh, about it? Sure. Um, basically, the Affordable Health Care Act does a number of things. We think this is a great first start for trying to be more comprehensive so that people uninsured in our country today can become insured. Mm -hmm. uh, that will occur in 2014. Uh, basically, the Affordable Health Care Act provides um, health insurance where a child, 26, a young person 26 and younger, can stay on their uh, parents' plan until they're 26 years old. Um, under the law, a child 18 and under who has a pre-existing condition can no longer be banned or kicked off uh, of private insurance plan. By the year 2014, all citizens of America will be um, able to be on a plan, can't be banned if they have a pre-existing condition. Under the current law, this year, insurance companies can no longer have an upper limit of how much they will pay out for medical expenses lifetime. In 2014, they will no longer have a cap on an annual basis of what they can pay out. Uh, for medical expenses. So those caps will be taken off, one right now um, for a lifetime, and then in 2014, it will end for annual uh, benefit uh, um, expenses. They have to pay out as much as you spend on medical expenses. Specifically as it relates to Medicare beneficiaries, mm -hmm. several things. Um, right now, looking at the entire healthcare system in our country, 75% of the costs are due to chronic disease. In some cases, um, people are genetically prone to have a particular disease or they get it uh, in their lifetime. Why is that important? One of the great things about the Affordable Health Care Act is it provides preventive services, mammograms, colonoscopies, at no cost, no, no, um, uh, no copay um, for anybody who uses those preventive services. Medicare always had preventive services, but there was a copay. No longer will there be a copay. Secondly, people who fall into the uh, donut hole, which is part of the Medicare Part D, which is a prescription drug program that helps seniors um, pay for some of their costs. Prior to the Affordable Health Care Act, the, um, a senior who fell, who spent more than $2,700 in 2012, up to uh, $7,600, would pay 100% out of their pockets. Between the 2700 and, then and 76. Okay. And then after that, Medicare would pick up 95% catastrophic. But because of the Affordable Health Care Act, they now can get a discount. If you have a brand name prescription drug and you fall into the donut hole, you will get a 50% discount on that brand name prescription drug. You will get a 14% discount if it's a generic brand of a prescription drug. Thirdly, we think it's really important the fact that because of the Affordable Health Care Act, um, you will see the Medicare Trust Fund remain solvent to the year 2024. That's not me telling you, that's the Congressional Budget Office, which is an independent federal department, nonpartisan. It would have no longer been solvent up until 2017, 
But with the Affordable Health Care Act, we will now be able to be solvent to the year 2024. So the Affordable Health Care Act actually strengthens Medicare on a budget basis from having it solvent more years than currently planned, if I understand you That's correctly. right. Over the 10-year span, mm -hmm. they will see a reduction of about $100 billion um, of the trust fund. So because of the Affordable Health Care Act, we will see uh, the solvency go to uh, 2024. Mm -hmm. There are no cuts. There are some people, um, politicians actually, who have distorted the facts. They have said that by having the Affordable Health Care Act, or, or as you suggested, mm -hmm. Obamacare, there would be cut of benefits to Medi Medicare beneficiaries. Mm -hmm. That is just not true. The two places where there will be savings to help pay for the Affordable Health Care Act are two things. One, way back in the early 2000s, there was a program called Medicare Advantage. Medicare Advantage was basically having federal tax dollars subsidize private insurance companies. So for example, a traditional Medicare compared to Medicare Advantage, it was about 13 to 15% subsidies that a Medicare Advantage, the federal government would pay a private insurance company to have that kind of a program called Medicare Advantage. Because of the Affordable Health Care Act, we will see a reduction in that tax subsidy to those insurance companies. It will, it will not end. It's been pretty successful. But why should the taxpayers of our country have to pay for a private insurance company to have a covering a plan that is better than a traditional the, Medicare? The, the Medicare Advantage would continue, but, but with subsidy, less subsidy, it would be reduced. Reduced subsidy That's right. from the federal government to the insurance company. And then the second, to get the savings is from curbing the growth of Medicare reimbursements for uh, nursing homes and hospitals. So those are the two areas that you will see a reduction to save money to help pay for Obamacare instead of what some politicians have been saying is that those are cuts. They are not cuts. In fact, as I said, because of those kinds of things, we are now having the Medicare trust fund remain solvent to the year 2024. One of the um, items that I have read about and would like to know if your view is um, the, uh, I, I understand Obamacare, uh, Affordable Health Care Act, whatever you would like to call it, um, requires um, some efficiencies to be developed in medical records. Um, and in Madison area, uh, this great company, Epic, which I understand has a huge percentage of Americans on their software. Um, is it uh, realistic, um, is it true that um, these efficiencies are required by the Affordable Health Care Act? And do you see the potential for significant savings by uh, the healthcare system being more efficient from the, the processing of information? We've been very fortunate in Wisconsin. We're already doing the things that you just said. Mm -hmm. So yes, there's a couple things I would like to say. First place, there's funding available to do exactly what you said, where there are communities that do not have the technology that they need to make it more efficient. Mm -hmm. Secondly, there will be a independent uh, body made up of professionals who will look at not only why is it that the reimbursement rates are so high for a particular provider, mm -hmm. how they could remedy some of those issues. But two, we are gonna go to a system more in the context of quality versus uh, fee-for-service program. So in other words, if a hospital, for example, um, ha helps a patient, they leave, the patient leaves, for many, many years they've had a high rate of people having to go back into the hospital within a couple weeks because they come up with a disease cause or illness caused by the hospital. We need to be much more uh, t attentive to make sure that that does not occur and we reduce that kind of going back into the hospital. Because of the Affordable Health Care Act, you will receive economic incentives to allow people to show, prove to people, prove to the federal government that basically they are seeing reductions. As an example of hospitals where patients leave, come back in, we see a reduction of that. So that is one way where we're gonna be looking at seeing how well healthcare providers um, do provide quality services Technology will play a role in that mm -hmm. because obviously if, if people can spend more time going doing directly medical services versus all the paperwork 
that many providers have. Um, it will have an impact, hopefully, on the quality of services that healthcare providers have. So another I issue is funding for additional nurses as well as primary care doctors. We think that was two very important years, especially in rural uh, America, mm -hmm. um, to have, a, have funds available to train more people into going to primary care and having incentives to go into primary care versus specialized care. And that will help, hopefully, as another thing, specifically as it relates to rural communities. Yeah. I have a question uh, that may or may not be uh, answerable, but it's uh, the, uh, is there a connection in the improved success that's projected for Medicare, the way you describe it, um, and perhaps uh, preventing an, uh, some additional burden on Medicaid where uh, if, if um, seniors, for example, are better protected from uh, an improved Medicare, they won't necessarily have to become impoverished, impoverished, I'm not saying that right, but go broke, um, and the then uh, have to utilize Medicaid um, uh, when they are, are so broke from medical bills that under the old system. Is there, do you see any connection, any uh, an advantage there? Well, I think the key thing is that state government has to be a partner with the federal government on specifically that, mm -hmm. so that we don't block grant and reduce the amount of money the federal government um, uh, divvies up to different state governments. Mm -hmm. So yes, I mean, obviously, uh, having an improved Medicaid system, which is partly uh, responsible for long-term care services, and making sure that the funding really does help a person who has to go into a nursing home um, and gets good Medicaid services if, God forbid, their health changes and they don't have the income um, availability for them um, to uh, basically uh, be, not only be back and stay in the community, but aren't physically able or mentally able to um, stay in the community, and then they would go to a nursing home. Okay. Um, your group's uh, mission is, uh, one, of the, one of the goals is education. Um, and so I'm gonna ask a, a question that could be a little touchy given the political season that we're in, but we do have uh, some clearly uh, different views uh, by the presidential candidates and their running mates. Sure. Um, so can you um, uh, give a short analysis uh, we know what the president has proposed, that's law. Uh, we now have um, uh, Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan propose, proposing some starkly different choices. Um, can you comment on some of the proposals they are making, uh, some of the possible consequences of those proposals? Sure. Um, well, the number one is um, Governor Romney and Congressman Ryan have proposed to repeal um, the Affordable Health Care Act. That means all the things that we've just talked about um, would no longer exist. They say they're going to replace it with something. They don't give us specifics of what they're going to replace it with. So all those benefits, not only to retirees, but also other American citizens, will no longer exist. The $716 billion that uh, Governor Romney talks about as a cut of Medicare um, beneficiaries he wants to restore that $716 billion into the Medicare trust fund. But bottom line is, by putting in all those restore, restorations of, of those funds means that the subsidies for private insurance companies will go back up again, and then there will not be a curb of growth in the reimbursement formula for hospitals, as an example. So basically, that part of the plan that they are suggesting would uh, lower the solvency of the Medicare trust fund. Secondly, um, many of the things that I said are very directly impacting, uh, as I said, all ages and specifically as it relates to Medicare beneficiaries. Congressman Ryan and Governor Romney want to have a two-tier Medicare, Medicare system. They want to have a program for workers 54 and younger where they would be privatizing Medicare they would get a certain amount of money, which I'll call a voucher. And then if that does not pay for those services, the worker who becomes beneficiary at the age of 65 plus would either have to take it out of their own pocket 
or cut back on the treatment that they need um, for a particular service. People on 65 right now and older, um, basically as they get older and older, some of these folks will become um, involved, 54 and younger, into the Medicare system. They want to have a two-tier system. One system that would privatize Medicare, voucher care I'll call it, for 50 year and younger, and also traditional Medicare. By doing that, at some point, the insurance companies are basically going to say, the cherry pick, they're going to pick the kinds of health people that are healthy at that age into the private part with less and less numbers in the traditional Medicare, which ultimately will be uh, the fact that Medicare will not be sustainable at some point because of the two-tier system that um, Governor Romney and Congressman Ryan are talking about in their plans if they became the president and vice president. So let me ask about the practicality of uh, seniors particularly uh, up in years. Um, I read some startling data that um, some 15% of folks living past 65 will have severe dementia. Some 50% of folks living past 85 will have um, uh, accelerating and severe dementia. Um, if you look at that data um, and then uh, ask yourself, how practical is it for those folks to go out into the market with this voucher to purchase? I mean, who really understands a health insurance policy, particularly with those mental difficulties? Sure. Uh, I think it's a great question. I want to clarify one thing, if I have not made this clear. People who are Medicare beneficiaries today, as well as other people who have other health insurance plans, if they do not want to change their plans, they don't have to. Every year, uh, a Medicare beneficiary has the opportunity to change the plan if they want, but they won't have to change anything. But going specifically to your question, it is exactly a problem. Basically, what Congressman Ryan and Governor Romney want to do is give you a, a set amount of money and you go on your own and talk to insurance companies and come up with a plan that best fits you. Well, obviously, people, brokers in the business, want to see profit. So they're not necessarily always looking out for the mom and dad, grandmother, grandfather, um, as they are for making a profit. So our belief is it's unrealistic to think that as people get older and older in the Medicare system, it will become more and more difficult for them if they decide to go in the route of into the privatizing Medicare to do that without having the facts in front of them to figure out what's best for them. But it, is, it will be a problem. I don't think it'll be a problem for most people today in the system because I, my, my sense is they're going to want to just stay in that system where it becomes a really problem besides what you're suggesting, which is basically having a, an individual Medicare beneficiary go on their own to talk to private insurance companies is basically having that two-tier two system. Okay, great. Um, we have about uh, two minutes left, and could you give an overview of, again, um, what's really uh, happening in uh, the Affordable Health Care Act, um, and what are the, uh, the choices that our uh, viewers, our, our Sun Prairie area residents, need to be thinking about as they make their citizen choices on this policy? Sure. Um, well, there's several things. One, in the uh, Affordable Health Care Act, there is a tax credit of 35% for small businesses that cover individual workers that they have on, will get a 35% tax credit. Mm -hmm. In the year 2014, somewhere between 30 to 40 million Americans will, who are uninsured, will be able to have a plan that we will call, it's called exchanges where basically those uninsured people in our state and other, st other people in other states will have a, 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 an array of insurance plans which they will um, decide what's best for themselves or best for themselves and their families. If they're low income in some extent, they can't afford the plan, there will be some subsidies available. We think ultimately if this plan is going to work, as many, most everybody should be on an insurance plan. And the reason why that's important, not only because the moral fabric of our country should have every American citizen have an insurance plan, but secondly, it's economically smart. 
why should we be paying an uninsured person who goes to the emergency room, whether it be for themselves or a family member, to take care of something that the primary care doctor could do, but what would happen? It would cost less and make much better sense versus going to emergency room. Governor Romney has said that we, he's going to be able to protect everybody. Even if it means that we can't get people insured, they at least know if there's some serious problem. They can get an ambulance and they will take them to the uh, emergency room. Um, our belief, a better system is covering people, making the, uh, the population of people insured larger, trying to minimize the people who are un uninsured, and then hopefully um, people can get primary care, which will be less expensive than a person having to go to the emergency room. Great. Thank you. And viewers, I hope that you become more educated on this issue and express your views locally in the state and nationally. It's your choice. It's our democracy. And you need to do your duty by getting involved and uh, making your views known. Thank you.